Hi, I'm Roy Hill with Brownells. Today we've got another gun from the vault, and in this case, it's my personal M1 carbine. M1 carbine's a really interesting little rifle uh, started in World War II. It was developed because other countries were paying attention to what Germany was doing as, as how they were waging blitzkrieg or lightning war, and all of a sudden you would get glider troops or armored columns appearing in, in the rear of an army, and Folks figured out real quick that they needed to equip rear line troops with something a little more effective than just a 1911 pistol or maybe a Thompson submachine gun. So they started to work on developing a light, handy rifle they could give to folks like truck drivers and cooks and uh, supply personnel. And the M1 carbine was first fielded in uh, 1942. Now the M1 carbine I have here is kind of interesting for several reasons. It's a mix master, which means it's got parts from more than one manufacturer. On the uh, receiver, and it has the late war or post war adjustable sight on here. On the receiver, on one side you can see a UND, and on the other side, on the other side of the sight, you can see an OOD. So that would be an Underwood. It's an Underwood receiver. In fact, I was checking out an internet site, and the serial number on this indicates this receiver was made sometime before November 1942. So the receiver itself is a pretty early model. However, it's got the later round style bolt. It's got an inland barrel, says right here on the barrel, inland manufacturer, General Motors. And uh, one of the coolest things I like about this rifle is the date on the barrel is 644. So this was made in June, the barrel was of 1944. Of course, D-Day, uh, the day of all days in World War II happens on June 6, 1944. As you can see, this one has what's called the pot belly stock. It kind of uh, bulges out there a little more than the original stocks. So it's got an early receiver, a 1944 inland barrel by a different manufacturer. It's got the fatter pot belly stock. Uh, it's also got the type three bayonet lug barrel band. And I was, I was interested in learning how controversial these are, especially among World War II reenactors. There are some folks who say, hey, it's just fine to have a bayonet lug because these were issued by uh, to some troops very very late in World War II, and other people say, "Oh heck no, that's not right. This is this is a Korean War thing." But either way, mine did come when I bought it with this Type Three bayonet lug. Uh, some other things about the M1 carbine. Of course, uh, the original M1 carbine magazines were these 15 rounders. So uh, when I bought the gun, it had came with two of these. And so the original 15 round magazine, as you can see, it fits in there and it doesn't protrude very far at all. And then in October of 1944, uh, a new version of the M1 carbine came out called the M2, which was fully automatic, capable of select fire. And they also came out with these 30 round magazines. Now this is a later manufacturer 30 round magazine that I picked up, oh, five or six years after I bought this gun. And uh, as you can see, that protrudes out there quite a bit more. But the 30 round magazine was developed to help sustain the fire because if you're going full auto and you only got 15 rounds, you know, it goes pretty quick. Here is a cartridge in the M1 30 caliber carbine uh, caliber. You can see it's a 30 caliber bullet, usually 110 grains. This is some um, actual military surplus. It says Lake City Brass. It's got the little sealant around the primer. So that's some, no telling how old that is. That's some, some old original uh, uh, M1 carbine ammunition. For me personally, I like this gun a lot for the following reasons. Number one, it's historical. Uh, it's very much associated with World War II. It was used extensively in the Korean War and even into the Vietnam War. Uh, for pr practical shooting purposes, it's light. It's handy. It's a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, if you've got some soft point ammunition, it could even be a serviceable, say, home defense uh, gun if you needed one. And I even know some folks in my own native state of Arkansas who actually hunt deer with these. It's actually legal in some states for deer hunting. But all in all, the M1 carbine is a neat, fun, handy, historical little carbine. Uh, if you ever get a chance to grab one of these, I would say go ahead and do it. And uh, they're just a lot of fun to shoot. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in next time we take another gun from the vault.